happy Wednesday and welcome to New Wave Traders. We're going to be diving into Bitcoin, taking a look at the bull and the bear counts, the invalidations as to when one count is confirmed over the other, as well as the inflection points as to when probability shifts towards one side. If you're brand new to the channel, drop me a comment down below saying hello. Let me know where you're coming in from today. I'm glad to have you here. My name is Shiler. I'm a full-time trader in the crypto market since 2017, and I'm focused on becoming the industry leader and be in creating successful traders. So if you're struggling to see results, check out the links down in the description below. See if New Wave Traders is a good fit for you. We're going to start off with a quick, re quick recap on Monday's video that we did here. We put out Monday videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell and all so you get notified when we update these videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Moving forward, I'm going to be separating out the videos between Bitcoin and ETH and then adding in an alt as well. So you get a few different types of analysis across the market, including traditionals, and you'll be able to see the versatility of the new wave system. All right, so this video was posted on November 16th, as you can see right down here. So six days ago, we, this is what we were looking at here on BTC. And ultimately, we were looking for a sideways consolidation, a range to be created here. That's an overall larger flat. A little bit early in the correction to project the different types of uh, wave structures internally that could be formed here. Ultimately, we ended up getting a triangle here and then seeing this trickle towards the downside. So we didn't get as large of a move up here for this C wave. We had a tight consolidation and then trickled down here, but we still came to revisit the lower side of this range, which is ultimately what we were looking for for this B wave and then being able to pivot up. The question is, are we in this pivot now? And where is price going moving forward after this C wave up here? We're going to drop in over into Bitcoin here. We're going to take a look at the four day counts first because that's what our larger correction is taking place on. We've got an ABC that I'm currently following. However, we need to get over the middle of our 0.618 retracement at 18.5, reclaim the floor that was broken right here, reclaim that for this count to come to fruition. 100% validation of this count is at 21,180. As a WXYXZ coming down for the overall count would be the completion of the first leg of the bear market. And we see another bear market rally much larger over here. To give correlation of this, you can look back in Bitcoin's 2019 uh, bear market over here and see that we had these humongous rallies that were still bear market rallies here and even here as well. 60%, um, 80% respectively on those. And I'd expect to see something similar over here as well with a larger rally towards the upside. If we get stuck underneath our floor that we broke at $18,300, then we're looking for a more bearish count, which connects towards the downside. This is a ABC towards the downside where our B wave gets rejected underneath 18.3K. So that's our line in the sand for Bitcoin here. Need to get above that for bulls. And down here on the smaller time frames, we're, we are gonna speculate whether or not we're in a B wave or we're in the start of an A wave towards the upside. And A wave does not have to start off impulsively. So we can start to move up correctively from here, which will make this a little bit trickier to navigate if we have a corrective bottom. Let's go ahead and dive into the four hour time frame and take a look at this all together and recap on the previous counts that we had as well. So we had a sandwiching count and then we had a triangle count. So our sandwiching count looks something like this here, which we did not get the C wave up on. This was a lot lower probability just because there's so much chop that would have to take place for this to basically come to fruition here. But we would have looked for this C wave right here in the middle. If you can see that, we would have looked for a pivot here before coming back down. Pretty low probability in that regards. We were on Monday's video six days ago. We were leaning more towards the bias that we we're going to connect down to the 0.618 or the one to one here. And that means sideways movement and then another leg down like that. That would bring us down to this one to one, which is at 14,750 um, versus just a double bottom right now for a B wave at 1550, uh, 550. So I feel comfortable going ahead and getting rid of this count altogether because that was really reliant on the C wave it was the lower probability one. The one that we did agree with more was our triangle count right here. So this triangle count had two targets. We had 15,437 and then we had 14,666. If we go to a linear scale, they're a little bit further away, which is why we're using log here. And this is for an expanded B wave to come down into the expanded pocket. In order for this to happen, we had two probability shift and an invalidation point. Your invalidation point is still left on the screen here. As you can see, that's at 16,745. We haven't hit that, but we're basically, we're basically there. So the probability shift was at the 0.618. Once we got over this little order block here, we engulfed that move. That was a pretty clear sign that this was the start of something and we weren't looking to connect back down. You'll understand this a little bit better on the 15 minute time frame when we dive in to this structure here, which would have resulted in a move down like so. Ultimately, we got pretty darn spot on with 
the 0.618 target here. If I zoom into this, we hit it right to the T. I was looking for a one-to-one -one in time, but ultimately we hit the 0.618 in time. So we hit the 0.618 retracement or extension and the time extension as well for this move. So a very perfect pivot, nice hammer candle, no, actually we got, it's more of a doji. We've got a wick on that top side there um, showing the neutrality of buyers and sellers as we came into that target zone there and we consolidated sideways. As such, the adjustments that should be made on this chart here are to move the B wave up. Our lower one-to-one -one target probably not getting hit at this point in time now. Whoops. So we'll bring the C wave right to here and we'll attach our larger ABC back on here. And we're looking for that move up. Now, because of where we fell, there's two ways that we're gonna be able to break this up. That's gonna offer a new count for Bitcoin here. I'm gonna take a bit of time here just to clean this up all together. And we'll grab our C wave extensions by pulling a trend extension of A. And my one to one comes in at 18,061 and I've got a 618 at 16,980. Those are my two targets for the upside here, but there is one area of inflection that we need to be aware of and watch out for. And that is just in case this drawdown here was a B wave. So I'm going to move these into our triangle count. We'll get rid of that and I'll show that this move here can still be a B wave and a C. This would allow us to connect back down and this is what we wanna be um, aware of here to still get a connecting leg to this. I think it's a little bit low probability versus the other one that's looking to connect upwards. But if we start to sell off too much here, we better be aware of this count and know that if we take out this low, that invalidates our other count and validates this one for us. Okay, so, and then this would still connect as an ABC towards the upside, and then we'd still connect back down. So why are we spending so much time with all these corrections in here? That's because we had a magnificent drop over here um, in price. And so we need to separate that out in time to help bring some symmetry to the market overall. Okay, so we're having an agreement between buyers and sellers that are taking place within this range. The top of that range is the, the A wave. The lower part of that range is the bottom of the A wave here. And so we can look for a sideways range to be created through here with internal sideways ranges to be created as well. Here we started off with a triangle and drop down, we're down at the bottom lower half of that, we're looking for this to pivot back up and revisit the top of this range now. And that's why these, or should I say the other count shifts with the C wave ending here and us being in the triangle instead of this ABC. Bias overall is the triangle count, four hour, looking for 17,000 and 18,000 respectively. And then we've got a 15 minute count that we're gonna go dig into to understand the smaller time frame here as well. Okay, so in last week's video, we talked about a 15 minute count where looking for a sideways flat and then trickling down to the one to one target here at 15.4. We hit that target really nicely um, down here. Time off a little bit. Again, it moved faster than the one to one and we didn't get the C wave up. So this shift needed to shift over here like so as our flat completed there. And I was still thinking that this was our B wave here. So a little bit off in regards to the flat correction, but ultimately still moved down towards our target. It is always a little bit harder to nail every single price movement of the market, but overall, especially on the smaller timeframes, but we had the larger time frame target here that did get hit and that looks good overall. So a couple adjustments we're gonna make is that ABC here. We can now look at this move here as a five wave move towards the upside. You can see the contracting nature of it, and we've broken that now as well. We're looking for an ABC back down, like so, into the previous, what we're gonna see here as a demand zone. And we're gonna look to treat this as the start of something towards the upside. That would be a larger wave one or an ABC. If we retrace below the 0.618 retracement, coming back down, this is super important to know about. Let's put on the 618 kick off these others. 618 is 15,908. We don't wanna come down underneath that. We've got this basically demand block down here, which is our wave two. There's no reason to come underneath that wave two. We can dip into it a little bit, get a couple of wicks into it. That's all fine and dandy. We just wanna see large buy-ups coming from that place. If we see a sell-off that is too fast, picture this coming down like that and once we'll move and then sideways and then back down again, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for controlled pullback, ideally into $16,100 to $16,300 and a max of $15,920 before looking to pivot back towards the upside there. Remember that this move here can be a C wave. And so that's why we want to be a little bit cautious and know that this can drain off very quickly. Another way to navigate this that's a little bit safer requires a little bit more patience and finesse on lower time frame fractals with Elliott wave or the new wave system is to wait for the pivot off of these two target zones and then do a money maker strategy 
is my number one strategy, which you can find on my channel. Just go to my channel and it's my tagged video there that you can watch. It's also in one of the playlists um, below on my YouTube channel as well. You can learn about the money maker strategy and use that off of the pivot towards the upside there. This way you're not having to catch the drop, but instead reacting to the reaction of it instead and setting up based off of set parameters using a strategy. I'm gonna just make one more last note that this is start of something. So on Bitcoin in summary, we've got 15,900 as our inflection point where probability shifts between this count towards the upside and the count towards the downside. This does qualify as the start of something or a C wave, which is why we can roll all the way over and engulf it. And ultimately, if it's the start of something, we're looking for an extension of this first leg over here that revisits the top side of this range at $18,080. That's it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to smash up the like button to help support the channel, as well as share it on your social platforms. And if you're not subscribed, definitely make sure to subscribe for future content. We put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And if you're interested in diving more into LA Wave, check out my free LA Wave ebook that I've created that goes very in-depth into time analysis, as well as Fibonacci relationships with LA Wave that you can get absolutely free down in the links in the description below. I also put out a video for Ethereum today, which you can watch at the end of this video. It should be popping up right about now. And make sure to check out my playlist for Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos. Just make sure that you're not missing any bonus videos that I might throw out there for alts or traditional assets. Happy Thanksgiving. If you're celebrating it tomorrow, enjoy some family time with friends and family and stuff your faces with some yummy food. I'll be doing the same. Much love, everybody, and take care.